Leif Ward made it out of the streets of Philly and moved to Atlanta when his name started buzzing. But then he went back to his hometown and now he might spend the rest of his life behind bars. It's a crazy story and today we're breaking it all down. In August 2023, Leif Ward took his girl to a restaurant in Philly called Bahama Breeze. It was a normal night at first, but on the way to the restaurant, someone spotted the whip they were in and called the cops because it was stolen. While Leaf and his girl were inside getting food, a tow truck driver rolled up and started loading up the stolen whip that Leaf was driving. Leaf Ward didn't know what was going down, so he ran outside when he spotted the dude trying to tow his whip, and that's when he noticed all the cops outside the restaurant. Leaf ran back inside and tried to escape out the back door. He didn't have enough time to get away though, and the cops chased him down. Getting caught with the stolen whip is bad enough, but then someone in the restaurant told the cops that they saw Leaf Ward toss a gun in the trash can outside. When the cops went and looked, they found a 40 cal pistol. On top of all that, Leaf Ward gave the cops a fake name when they questioned him, which led to another charge. Plus, they found pills in the stolen whip too. He was already a felon who couldn't carry a gun, but rumors said the situation just got even worse for him. The feds allegedly got involved with the case because Leaf's Glock had a switch on it. A switch basically turns any Glock into a machine gun, and the feds have been cracking down on him hard. Catching a gun charge as a felon is tough, but if the feds are on him because of the switch, Leaf Ward could end up doing over 20 years just for that charge alone. Leaf was arrested in 2021 for making false statements to buy a gun, selling guns, and conspiracy. It's not clear if that case was already cleared up by the time he caught the new charges, but if that case is still open, then the feds could wrap everything together and really throw the book at Leaf Ward. What makes the whole thing even worse for Leaf is that he already made out of Philly once. Leaf came up on the west side of the city, repping 57th in Osage. His dad got booked for 15 years when he was a kid, so Leaf's mom raised him by herself and tried to keep him out of the streets. As a kid, he was pretty good and just wanted to play sports, but then he hopped off the porch like everyone else around him and got active in the streets. Leaf started getting into trouble a lot, but he never gave up on school and actually wanted to make it out of the streets the legit way. He graduated high school and went straight to college and wanted to become a veterinarian, but it didn't take long for his plan to fall apart. During an interview with Say Cheese TV, Leaf Ward said that the college he went to had a bunch of dudes from Philly and there was a lot of drama going on. Leaf couldn't focus on his grades and ended up with a 0.07 GPA. We was beefing in college, bro. So like, bro, I had a, at the end of the first semester, bro, I had a fucking 0.07, bro, because I I couldn't focus. There was too much going on. We had real smoke in college. It was in college. All, yeah, bro, it was all Philly niggas that went to my school, bro. And that's when he decided to drop out and go back to the hood to become a rapper. Leaf had already been rapping for years. Back in middle and high school, he would pound on walls and freestyle for the homies, and a lot of them were pushing him to get in the booth. Leaf Ward dropped his first track while he was still in college, and it ran up a few thousand plays fast. So Leaf knew he had potential to make it in the game. He came back to Philly and started dropping projects, but back then, he had a wild drug addiction that really held him back. Leaf Ward told Say Cheese TV. I was on Perks from 2012 to 2017, bro. He was popping Perks every day and couldn't live without them. By the time he finally kicked the habit in 2017, he says he'd already spent over 100K just on perks, and a lot of that money came from some OGs in the neighborhood. When Leaf went back to Philly to become a rapper, there were some older dudes in the neighborhood who wanted to help him out and get started. They'd give Leaf enough cash to pay for like six hours of studio time, then Leaf would hit the booth for four hours and use the rest of the cash to buy more Percocets. The problem got so bad that Leaf even stole from his own mom to get drugs. She had a little stash of money in her crib, and one time, Leaf was down so bad that he raided it. His mama supported him his whole life, and that's when Leaf Ward knew he was really burnt out and had to get off the pills. Another reason he wanted to kick it was because of his girl. They had been best friends for like 10 years, and Leaf wanted to date her, but she told him he wasn't getting with her till he sorted himself out. All of that was enough to make him leave the perks behind, and that's when Leaf Ward really got serious with his music. The perks weren't the only things holding him back though. Leaf was still in the streets, and in 2018, he caught a charge and couldn't pay the bail. It looked like he was going to have to sit down for a while till the case got sorted, but then a Philly legend stepped in to help him out. PNB Rock came up in an area of Philly called Germantown. Back in the day, he was heavy in the trenches and caught his first robbery charge at just 13 years old. PNB spent a lot of time behind bars and ended up being homeless after he came out of prison, but he didn't let any of that get in his way and started making moves in the rap game. By the time Leaf was trying to become a rapper, PNB Rock was already a star who made it out of Philly and worked with some of the biggest artists in the game. PNB Rock was still tapped in with what was going on in his hometown though, and when Leaf Ward got locked up, PNB reached out and offered to pay his bail so Leaf could come home. 
P&B Rock didn't even want anything back. He just wanted to help another rapper from his city out. They came and got me out of jail, got me a defense, bro, brought me right home, bro. I'm like, I don't even know these niggas. Like, what the fuck y'all want in return? You feel me? They ain't want nothing in return, bro. They said, just do you. Like, keep getting your money. Like, you feel me? After that, they started linking up in the studio, which was a huge win for Leaf Ward. He started building up a major buzz in Philly with his They Forgot series and other hot tracks. But then he got caught up in a wild shooting that almost killed him. One day, Leaf was pulling out of a driveway and started rolling down a one-way street. He checked everything out around him before he hopped in the whip, but somehow the ops got the drop on him anyway. While he was going down the street, another car showed up out of nowhere right in front of him. Leaf had one hand on the steering wheel when a shooter hopped out and started letting off shots, and one of the bullets hit two of his fingers and went into his hand. Luckily, his hand was there though, because otherwise the bullet would have hit him right in the face and probably killed Leaf on the spot. The shooter done 14 shots at him, while Leaf threw the whip in reverse and backed right back into the spot he just left. He thought they were going to pull up and finish him off, but luckily the shooter hopped back in their whip and drove off. Leaf made out of the situation alive, dissed the ops on the track Young Nigga when he rapped. Ops threw 14 shots, only hit me once in my hand. Them niggas was missing. They know they fucked up, they supposed to walk me down. They didn't, cause niggas was bitching. Nobody was ever booked for the shooting, but rumors say it's related to one of the craziest beefs in Philly history. After Leaf got hit up, another Philly rapper named Chalk Glizzy dropped the track No Lack and rap. Niggas keep talking about bodies, I'll put the zoo on the map. I'll put my gang on my back, no cha, then they probably wouldn't rap. Next score, then we up, get him back. So you know we not tripping, get him back. He got shot in his hand, if I was part of the plan, a nigga wasn't making it back. Cha Glizzy was affiliated with another rapper from the city named Hood Tally, and they got into a deadly beef with a dude named Poundside Pop. It all started back in the day at a basketball game when Pop's homie Sadi this to do from Uptown the set that Tali is affiliated with. Then Chai Glizzy and Sadi ended up behind bars at the same time and allegedly started throwing hands. That's when the beef really heated up and people started dying. Poundside Pop's homie Sadi was trying to make it in the rap game while he was still in high school. But according to rumors, one of his classmates set him up. A dude from Uptown named Wee went to the same school and was allegedly hooking up with the same girl as Sadi back then and that's how he found out where Sadi lived. In February 2017, Sadi was chilling at his crib when someone pulled up and started shooting him through the front window. He was tragically killed at just 18 years old, and rumors say Chalk Glizzy was a driver on the hit. Then Chalk Glizzy's homie Stooks got hit up at a party a few months later, and rumors say it was get back for Sadi. Some uptown affiliates allegedly clapped back and killed Sadi's homie Jalil Mitchell, who was an innocent dude that wasn't even in the streets. A few months after that, Cha Glizzy lost another homie when the ops caught Wee and shot him to death. Then Cha got locked up and had to chill out for a while, but when he came back in 2020, he went right back to putting pressure on the ops. Sadi's homie started calling himself Zoo Gang after he died, and that's why a lot of people think Cha Glizzy self snitched for being involved with the shooting when he dropped the track No Lack and said, Niggas keep talking about bodies, I put the zoo on the map. Chalk Lizzy was getting some buzz on his name in the industry, but the streets caught up to him before he could make it out of Philly. On June 7, 2020, two alleged zoo gang members shot him to death, and rumors said that Sadi's brother was the one who pulled the trigger. After Chalk Lizzy died, Leaf Ward started dissing him on social media, and Leaf's homie OT7 Kwani dissed Chalk Lizzy on the track Z Double O, rapping, Last nigga play with zoo name, shit, got him stepped on. I know you remember, you can't forget it, cause you was next to him. I put that on God. We catch a man, and we gon' take it there. They said that his body had left the scene, but shit, his face still there. Leaf was also going back and forth with Hood Tally on IG, but Tally ended up moving out of Philly before he could get caught up in the situation. Philly has always been a wild city, but while Leaf Ward was coming up, the city was getting way worse. Back in the mid-2010s, the homicide rate was around three times higher than the national average, but by 2021, it had jumped up to five times the national rate and Leaf Ward says that Percocets and drill music definitely turned the city up. Leaf Ward told Say Cheese TV, I bro, I really seen it, bro. Like, nigga, get high, bro. Be like, man, like, man, fuck it. We on this, we out, we about, you know, ain't like, fuck it, I don't give a fuck. But then when you sitting in that cell, bro, and you sober, bro, niggas like, damn, like, what the fuck? What the fuck was wrong with me? Dudes from different hoods always had issues. But Leaf said that Chicago drill popping off made everyone think that having ops was cool. According to him, everybody want to be like that. How Chicago was, you already know. Everybody, you mean they really they came out and made a like made a wave. You feel me? Like 
You know I mean, they had all the young niggas' attention, niggas growing up, niggas want to do this and do that. Niggas, niggas really deal with like pain when they lose their homies and shit. One of the most violent wars in the city was between a crew called 27th Street and another gang called 31st Street or Tasker. 27 runs the area around 27 and Dickinson Street and are one of the most known gangs in the city. Tasker used to be one of the most active crews in South Philly and had ties to Zoo Gang. Leaf Ward is cool with Tasker and Zoo Gang too, which made anyone from 27th Street is up. It's not clear exactly how the war started, but rumors say it goes all the way back to 2004 when a teenager from 27th Street was shot and killed on the 2800 block of Wharton Avenue. His brother Tyreek started sliding on Tasker to clap back and ended up catching some charges. Then 27th Street allegedly killed a Tasker affiliate named Tariq Blue. The war went on for years with bodies dropping on both sides, but in January 2017, it hit a whole new level. Between January 2017 and February 2018, the cops said that the beef between Tasker and 27th Street led to over 40 shootings in just 13 months. Nooski the Goat was a 27th Street affiliate who ended up falling into the trenches after his mom died and his older brother got locked up. His brother rep 27th Street too, so Nooski the Goat followed in his footsteps and ended up dead just a couple years later. Nooski started dropping music and building a buzz on his name. But then two Tasker affiliates allegedly ran him down at a Chinese restaurant in December 2017 and left him dead on the floor. Leaf Ward is cool with one of the dudes who allegedly killed him, and rumors say that's why he got shot. Around 2021, Leaf Ward moved out to Atlanta with his daughter and his girl. He told Dirty Glove Bastard, Philly, that shit. That shit hot right now. I should have been out of Philly. Like, motherfuckers, you guys tell me, like, man, like, you ain't no regular nigga. Like, you somebody. Like, get the fuck out of here. You know hear I me? Mean? I start realizing, like, no, nah, if I really stay here, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna end up in jail. I gotta go. Most rappers who die in the street get caught up in their hometown. So, Leaf moving out to Atlanta was definitely a good play. He was linking up with other artists out there and probably could have made some real momentum in the industry. But for some reason, he ended up going back to Philly. Before Leaf Ward caught the new charges, he had just taken another major loss after his manager, Rondo Double R, was shot and killed in Puerto Rico. It's not clear exactly what went down, but this is the story according to some sources. Rondo allegedly wasn't just a manager for dudes like Leaf Ward and his homie OT7 Kwani. Rumors say he had been moving heavy weight in the streets and used dirty cash to put in the rap game. He allegedly had some beef in Philly that was more about street drama than anything going on with the rap game. And that's how he ended up dead in Puerto Rico. According to sources, Rondo went down to San Juan, Puerto Rico with his homie Fatty and some other people. San Juan is one of the deadliest cities in the world, but people think Rondo felt safer down there than he did in Philly because he didn't have ops who were hunting him. Fatty and Rondo survived one shootout in Philly and clowned the ops for missing, but unfortunately this time, Rondo didn't make out alive. He was leaving a restaurant in San Juan when two cars ambushed him and shot him to death. It's not clear who was behind the hit, but they were definitely going for Rondo and it wasn't just some random robbery or anything. The killers hit him fast, then flipped his body over and took a picture that leaked all over the internet. Some people think Rondo's ops in Philly have family ties in Puerto Rico and that's how they got the drop on him. But right now, nobody really knows what went down. Losing Rondo was a massive blow for Leaf Ward. He was the one really pushing him in the rap game. And one time, he even paid G Herbo 30k just so he would hop in the booth and do a feature with Leaf. A lot of street dudes talk about getting numb to all the death and violence, but Leaf was honest in his interview with Say Cheese and said that you never get used to losing people. It's crazy because I said that before, bro, but I don't, you don't never get immune to that shit, bro. Like, that shit ain't never. I mean, if you really love a motherfucker, bro, that shit don't never get normal losing somebody, bro. So. I ain't getting into it, bro. It seemed like Leaf knew he needed to make it out of Philly and leave all the street drama behind him. But instead, he went back, and now he's facing decades in prison. Keeping a strap on you makes sense when you've got ops all over the place, especially in a wild place like Philly. Leaf already got caught lacking once and almost died, but instead of getting away from the city for good, he stayed in the trenches and might end up spending the rest of his life behind bars.